In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a custom loop in Elementor that's able to pull in custom fields from advanced custom fields. As an example, this is a loop I created. It only has three listings. They have a featured image, a title, an excerpt, a button, and some extra data right here. This extra data is advanced custom fields. All the other stuff you can get in a regular loop using Elementor Pro, but you cannot add advanced custom fields data using just straight up Elementor Pro. We're gonna use a plugin called Elementor Custom Skin to make that happen. I'm gonna show you how it all works in this tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below this video. I try to answer them the best I can. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And now let's get into this video right now. To set up this tutorial, I created three posts. They are really basic. These are the three right here and they are a title, some warm Ipsum text, a featured image, and an excerpt, which is just taken from the, from the warm Ipsum text over here. And this is gonna be loosely a real estate website. All the posts are about houses that are for sale, and we're gonna add list prices to those houses, or asking prices to those houses using advanced custom fields, which is one of the plugins we have installed. We have four plugins installed, advanced custom fields, Ellie Custom Skin, also called Elementor Custom Skin, which is a free plugin that you can find right here. This is linked to in the description down below if you want to check it out. And then we have Elementor and Elementor Pro. The top three are all free. Elementor Pro is required because that's what does the post looping. And Elementor Custom Skin adds a custom template option to our post loops, which allows us to bring the advanced custom fields into those custom loops. To show you what I mean, let's go to pages. This is a basic page I created called Top Listings. This is where we're gonna add our custom loop. And if we use just the Elementor posts, let's drag and drop that in. We have our very familiar looking post, so we can then edit and change. We can choose the classic skin. We can choose cards. And we have a lot of customization options for these. What we cannot do is add advanced custom fields content to these cards or to this classic layout. That's where the custom option comes in. This custom option is added by Elementor Custom Skins. Before we add this to the page, let's actually see how to create them. So let's back out of here and go back to the dashboard. To create a custom skin is pretty straightforward. Go to Elementor Templates, Theme Builder. This is another reason you have to have the pro version because we have to actually be able to create templates. And in the Theme Builder, we have a new tab called Loop. This is the loop that Elementor Custom Skin adds. So I'm going to create a new loop. I'm going to call it houses, create template. And we have our blank canvas right here. Now I'm going to add a featured image, pulls in one of our houses. If nothing's being pulled in for you, go down to the gear icon on the bottom left and under preview settings, Choose a post or a page that pulls in the data that you want so you can create the template more easily. We're going to add post title. And we're going to add post excerpt. And we're going to add a button. Pretty straightforward stuff. It's going to style this a little bit so it's a little nicer, a little nicer looking. There we go. I'm going to change the text for the button to say view the full listing here. That's not the color I wanted. There. Now we have our basic item that's going to go into the loop. This is a lot bigger than the ones we saw a moment ago. What we're creating is the individual item and its layout and its features and its appearance. And we will then loop through that in what's called the loop and it will show as many items as we want on the page that we put it on, and we can adjust those settings using the Elementor Builder. So let's further customize this a little bit. I'm gonna add a border width of one and make it really light gray. And I'm gonna make sure the background of this is white, just in case we decide to change the color of the main background later. That's not all see-through. So there, we have our listing and it's all done. That's great. We're not gonna add the ACF custom field right this second. First, I wanna create this loop and put it on the page and see how it looks. And then we'll come back and add the custom fields. Let's publish this. For conditions, you don't need to choose any in this case. Let's just click on save and close and then exit out of here. 
and let's go back to our pages, our top listings page. This is where we want our listings to appear. Let's just uh, close the section or get rid of it. So we add the posts widget, which is an Elementor Pro widget. Add that there. We get our classic layout like we've seen before many, many times if you built any websites. It's going to add some padding at the top. Bring it down a little bit. And this is where we can change our loop. This is looping through all of the posts that we have on the page or on, on our website. We can set the number of columns, we can set the number of posts, we can add pagination, and it'll loop through all of your posts. That's why it's called the loop. It just keeps on looping through. So we choose from here, custom. Under template, we choose houses. This pulls in or loops in all the houses using the custom template we just created. And that's all there is to it, super simple. But this is not too different from, let's say, the cards, which you can customize all you want inside of Elementor. So the real power is not that you can make it look the same. The real power is that you can add things like advanced custom fields. So let's update this and exit out of here. And now let's add some advanced custom fields. I'm not going to create a new listing type for this for the sake of time. You could use custom post types to create the listings custom field on the left hand side here and then create all your listings inside the listing field. That's what you should do if you're building out a big website. In this tutorial, I just want to show you how to add custom fields to your loop. In a future tutorial, I'm going to build a complete real estate website and we'll use custom post types for that. In this case, we're not going to. Let's go to custom fields. Let's click on add new and let's call the group listing info and let's add a field. Let's call this list price or asking price. Make this a number. You can enter instructions here if you want. Um, I will. Enter the asking price. Is it required? Yes or no? I'm going to choose no because maybe some people don't want to have the listing price on there. Maybe they want you to call them to find out. That's usually how you do it for really expensive houses. And let's add another field. Let's call this square footage. Because even though I'm in Canada and we use the metric system, we do a lot with square feet. Don't ask me why. This is how it is. So square footage, enter the square footage of the house. This one I will make required. And with those two fields and the data we use, you'll get the idea of how this works. So that's all we're going to put in here. For rules, we're going to add this to the post type if it's equal to post. And that's totally fine. And all the rest I'm going to keep the same except for position. I'll put it on the side. And then click publish. Let's go back to our posts. Let's edit this one. So now the custom post type field is going to be on the side over here. And here they are listing info, asking price, and square footage. So for asking price for this property, let's say 700,000 square footage, let's say 2,500. Update. Let's do that again for the Garfield Avenue house. Let's make this one 800,000. And the square footage is going to be 3,000. And the Calvin and Hobbes Crescent House. This one's going to be 900,000. Square footage is going to be 5,000. Update. So now we have our data in the posts. Now we can put that data into our custom loop template. Let's go back to our templates. Theme Builder. Houses Loop. Edit with Elementor. And I'm going to put this information right below the title. So let's pick a text editor, drag that in. Let's choose dynamic. Let's scroll down to ACF field. Let's pull in asking price. There's the asking price. Let's put something before that. Let's call it asking price and then a dollar sign. There we go. And I'm going to just duplicate this. Let's change this from asking price to square footage. And before, we're going to put uh, square feet. There we go. That's all done. Now, this is going to be in our loop. Let's click on Update, Save and Close, Exit to Dashboard, Go to, where are we going? Pages. 
and Ella with Elementor. And we now see, hopefully, yeah, there they are. We have our asking prices and our square feet right in our loop. And right here is the future home with the real estate website tutorial that I'm gonna build using advanced custom fields. If that's not ready yet, this is going to be a custom login form tutorial. So check out one of those two, whatever one happens to appear here. My name is Bjorn, I'll pass in the WP Learning Lab. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn, I'll pass in the WP Learning Lab. Until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.